and welcome to Nitro Talk. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Phantom FR-18. Uh, this is a very nice Nitro engine, uh, as we're going to see uh, here very shortly. Please like and subscribe if you're into Nitro engines, Nitro vehicles, anything related to the Nitro side of the RC hobby. Um, this engine uh, was pulled out of a T-Max some years ago uh, and has been sitting on the shelf, uh, but it had all the T-Max running gear on it still, uh, as you can see right there. Um, but one thing, before we get into this, um, the crank did not want to come out of here. I had to fight it, and uh, as you can see, doesn't want to go back in either. It gets caught on it. So, uh, now is a good opportunity to show a little trick. Uh, and you can do this with lots of different things. Um, one thing that people have done for years is uh, hinge pins. Uh, they'll uh, polish hinge pins by chucking them in a drill and spinning them. Um, you can do it with a lot of different things. Uh, so what I'm going to do, as you can see, I've chucked that crank into my drill here. And I'm going to take a sanding sponge. And I get these from the Dollar Tree. Um, buck and a quarter now. It used to be a dollar, but buck and a quarter now. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to, you know what, I'd like to, you know what, let me do this uh, the right way. Uh, let's see. Yeah, about right in half would be good. I'm going to cut this sanding sponge right in half. That way, I can sit this nice and even on here. Uh, you see how before, this is an old, older one. You know, I, I, I could eat, I'd either have to lay it cockeyed on there or sand the top of my drill. So I cut a nice chunk. That way I can lay it on here nice and flat and I don't get my drill. All right, so I'm like, now... The thing with uh, cranks, you certainly don't want this crank to be loose in there. And, you know, if you, I really just want to get the oxidation and stuff off of here. I don't really want to take uh, any of the metal away. I really just want to give it a good cleaning. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Kind of uh, give it a little back and forth. And as you'll see, that crank is looking much better. Now, what I feel is one of the issues with getting it back in, this edge here is uh, not beveled. It feels like a very hard edge. So I'm going to just work on that a little bit, try to give that edge... Just, uh, so hopefully it'll go back in easier. So let's see if uh, that helped with getting our crank. Make sure no uh, sandy, spongy stuff on it. Uh, let's see if that helps with getting it back into the crankcase. And there we go. And now it's still nice and tight in there uh, but now it'll actually go in and come out uh, without having to fight with it uh, and I do I chuck so many different things into my drill and spin them uh, 
I will be showing you many things I do that with. Uh, it helps with a lot of things. Uh, so that right there. Uh, now this crank will come in and out. And it's certainly, it's, uh, it's not like it's loose. Uh, you know, we didn't take that much off of it. Just basically gave it a good polish. All right. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's take a look at this gorgeous. Uh, this now let's talk for a second about uh, Toki. These Phantom engines uh, are made by Toki. We haven't really talked about uh, Toki. Uh, it's not SH, not Force, uh, who make uh, m most of uh, the nitro engines that are made by. Uh, the big manufacturers, uh, not OS Nova Rossi, uh, your RTR engines and whatnot, you know, most of them are SH or force based. Uh, but there are some Toki engines out there. The thing that I find interesting about Toki engines is it seems like they're either really, really good or really, really bad. There's like no middle of the road Tokis. Um, uh, one of the bad ones, for example, was the one that comes in the Nitro XRC, uh, vehicle that was like sold in like Toys R Us and whatnot. Um, that is a, uh, they, they, they have to sell the fuel, uh, with it, um, that you bought in the store with it. That was like 25, 30% oil, um, to, to keep that engine running. Uh, if you try to run it with, a uh, standard nitro fuel and it, it'd be toast. Um, but on the other hand, um, the uh, Orion Wasp small blocks, which are legendary small blocks, uh, are made by Toki. These Phantoms, which are also uh, some amazing small blocks, uh, are made by Toki. Uh, made in Japan. Uh, Toki uh, is a Japanese company. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, and the thing that I've I noticed about this is a very high quality aluminum in this engine. Uh, you can tell it is a very high quality aluminum alloy that they used uh, to make this engine. And if you look down in there, beautiful cuts down inside that crankcase. See if we can get you a view up in there. Uh, the Toki crankcases are kind of unique. You can kind of, they all kind of look the same uh, as each other. Um, you can kind of tell a Toki they look a lot like, alike each other. The Epic uh, were Toki based. Um, anyway, steel front bearing in here, uh, metal shielded front bearing I mean and a, a standard steel front bearing in the rear did you hear what I just said a standard steel front bearing in the rear Whew. a standard steel bearing in the rear uh, but like I said beautiful aluminum in this engine and very uh the precision on this thing is top notch uh top notch precision on this particular um engine that's our crankcase, all right. Uh, let's go ahead and look at that head, a gorgeous head. Um, another one that uh, you don't need shine cuts. Uh, I guess those apparently would technically be shine cuts, but the rest of it's so, so shiny that it, they don't really stand out. Uh, Phantom and FR18 on that. Uh, a unique head, a great looking head. Now, I know I had mentioned this before, but let me touch on it again. Um, T-Maxes, you know, I've had a bunch through the years, uh, sold them. I used to buy, sell, trade a lot. Um, but the one T-Max that left the biggest impression on me throughout the years was one that was powered by a Phantom FR-15 engine. And that engine threw that T-Max around. That it was a pleasure to drive. Uh, I'm really, really thinking about putting this Phantom FR18 here 
in the Todd Max project. I think it would be a great engine for it. Um, you know, let's go ahead and move next. And let me pause yet again to say, I've said before in my videos that when I say I've never seen something before, you should act, you should take that seriously. Um, at this point, I have 106 videos online. Um, uh, individual engine videos are maybe, I don't know, 40, 50 of those. I haven't really looked. Okay, so that's 40, 50 engines I've done videos on. Trust me when I tell you that there are tons more to come. I have dealt with so many nitro engines. When I say I've never seen some of them before, take that seriously. I have never, ever seen an 18 engine with a turbo head button. Uh, I'm sure there are some out there, um, but t turbo plugs, you're, you're mostly going to see them on 21s and you're going to see them on 12s, um, t some 28s, uh, but 15s and 18s, you hardly ever, never have I seen another 18 engine uh, stock with a turbo plug. And that's exactly what we have here. This Phantom engine is turbo plugged and it has an O'Donnell 97 uh, turbo plug in it. Uh, nice and thick head button there. Um, this entire engine is in very good condition. We're going to be uh, looking at the uh, all of it here soon. And like I said, it all looks to be very high quality aluminum. Let's look at this back plate. Just a, a huge slab. Look at that. Just a huge slab of aluminum. Again, precision machined uh, brass uh, bushing there in the middle of this back plate. And look at that huge, uh, that super wide O-ring there. And see how that O-ring glistens? Um, just everything just looks really good on this engine. I mean, look at that back plate. That's just a slab of beautiful aluminum right there. A non-interference back plate. Um, but again, very nice. Um, let's look at that crank, uh, that we gave a little clean up to there. Uh, induction window is blocky as heck on the uh, leading side. Uh, not ramped. Eh, a little bit of ramp. Um, fairly small opening. Uh, and this end looks kind of odd to me. Uh, the teardrop, the, or the fang, doesn't really uh, look like a traditional fang. It almost has a, a little V-spec a uh, wide opening there, but, and then a little fang coming off of that. It's almost like the fang is coming off of that, not the main hole there. Uh, but that hole is opened up there uh, at the bottom, as you can see. And uh, since it is a pull start engine, it does have the uh, additional pin uh, on the crank pin there. Uh, and that's a thin end piece there, end piece, whatever you call it, uh, nothing on the leading edge, it's a full round crank, uh, not a uh, half size with the bottom half, uh, nothing done to the leading edge or trailing edge, just that little bit of work in the middle and the fang on there, which again, 18 engines, you don't see a lot of fangs on the cranks of 18 engines. You also don't see a lot of fangs on the sleeves of 18 engines. Uh, this is a rear exhaust 18. A rear exhaust rotary carb 18. That is a unique setup. Uh, this was made for the, maybe not made for it, but this was set up, um, purchased like this for the first generation T-Max. 
this came out of a first gen uh, rotary carb um, T Max. All right, let's look at that sleeve. Uh, again, you see the fang, uh, big fang. Let's start at the exhaust port, which does not look, you know, it looks like this is a rear exhaust engine. That looks the, like the exhaust port from a side exhaust small block. Why well, can't, there we go. Uh, it does not look like a rear exhaust side port. Uh, and our intake port is uh, really odd as well. It is huge. Uh, it is not ramped at the bottom, although if you look at it on the inside, the top of it, come on now. The top of it on the inside is ramped uh, going up, uh, but from the outside, the bottom of it is not ramped. Just a huge intake uh, window there, intake port. And then uh, our Schneerly ports on the side there are uh, nice and big and have a, a really large fang on them. Uh, both have that fang. And then our uh, exhaust port there is that odd oval-shaped exhaust port. Um, yeah, kind of a unique sleeve for a unique engine. And that's our piston. And again, remember how I said uh, just beautiful aluminum on this thing. Uh, that piston top looks brand new. Uh, but as you can see, it does have... Uh, some use on it. I'd say this engine, just by looking at it, you know, has under two gallons for sure. Um, not a really a knife edge on there, but um, certainly smaller than uh, a, a blocky one. Kind of knife edged, dull, dull knife edged, we'll call that, and not super meaty uh, at the bottom of the connecting rod. Um, let's look at that rotary carburetor there. We've got a plastic banjo fitting on it. Um, it again appears to be like everything else. We've got to line up that boot, of course. Um, you know, look at the screw, uh, idle adjust screw right there. It looks like it has barely been touched. Uh, this engine is in, you know, very good condition. The low speed needle there, high speed needle. No, uh, it almost looks brand new. The carburetor there. Uh, we looked at everything, it's got a Traxxas pull start on it, and I uh, it, it looks like apparently it was made for a Traxxas pull start. I mean, it fits on there perfectly, and the roller clutch, uh, one way bearing, the Traxxas roller clutch. Um, is what is used on it. Um, you know, let's go ahead and throw it. Do we look at everything? Um, a very good looking engine, huh? Do you agree? I really like this engine. Uh, looks like it's going to make tons of power. Uh, where is my assembly oil? Give that. Uh, now this engine uh, has came out of the ultrasonic bath. Um, you know, I'm still using, uh, my degreaser that I've used for years, um, but it's been giving me problems lately. Some, it's, some metal has been reacting to it. You know, I think, uh, it's the, something to do with the ultrasonic bath. Um, I've had a couple of engines uh, one of them I did was the Ofna or the Hobiel three port bump start engine. Uh, if you look at that video, I talk about how it discolored the crankcase for that engine. Um, but I've kind of discovered uh, it, do it certainly doesn't do it to every engine, only certain engines. And only if left in there for a good amount of time. So I found if I just, you know, throw stuff in there for 
uh, a minute or so. Uh, it still cleans it pretty good, um, but doesn't discolor the aluminum, which you never want that. Put a little bit of oil on the outside of that sleeve so it'll go in nicely. There we go. And always look for your uh, indexing pin. So you put your uh, sleeve in the right location. And I like to drop of uh, oil inside the uh, cylinder as well. And uh, a single shim on this thing. Uh, I tried to pick it apart 30 times because it feels uh, thick, but no, it's just a single. It's at least a three. 0.32. It's a thick three. So let's grab our head button, put our head shim on that. Throw that on there. And our cooling head. All right. And we have some standard two and a half millimeters here for this. The back plate has uh, your uh, pretty much standard uh, two millimeter um, for the back plate. Now, just to reiterate, like I do every time uh, when I'm tightening down a cooling head, um, I will just bring the bolts down till they touch. I'll do all four like that till they uh, almost touch. I'll kind of touch them and then back off a, a touch. So that all four, I'll put all four uh, all the way down uh, to where they're essentially touching, uh, but not tight. So now all four of them, right, that head is secure, but none of the bolts are tight. So now I'll go back, tighten the first one, go to the one across from it, tighten it, and then the other two. Give that a feel. See how that, oh yeah, making beautiful compression. Uh, let's go ahead and throw, that is our starting shaft. This has an external uh, one-way bearing. Uh, the roller clutch is on the outside. Um, starting shaft on the inside. And that is our up. Yeah, this, uh, oh, you know what? I forgot. Did I forget to molly coat that O-ring? You say it ain't so. Uh, where are we at? And of course, my molly coat is going to come up missing. Uh, you know, I will, uh, I'll take it back apart and throw, uh, the molly coat on it. I'll put it together for the uh, video here and then because uh, all, all o-rings I lubricate all o-rings with molly coat. Um, I've been doing that for a few years now and I stand by uh, molly coat. I think it's a really good product. I've had really good results uh, with it and I research uh, stuff like uh, I've mentioned before I used to use associated green slime as my o-ring lubricant and I did a lot of research uh, and uh, I found that molly coat uh, is far superior so that's what I use on all of my o-rings all right, next step is the uh, Traxxas roller clutch, they call it, uh, one-way bearing. And the uh, Traxxas 
uh, pull starter on here. The Traxxas pull starter is a pretty good uh, pull starter. It is. Um, the uh, one-way bearings here tend to have uh, slipping issues. Uh, but like I've said before about one-way bearings, um, I can always get more life out of a one-way bearing by cleaning it. Um, I don't think I've ever not been able to uh, get some more life out of a one-way bearing by cleaning it. And this one-way bearing uh, on here is fine. All right, so this is pretty much back together. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like I was saying, uh, this Phantom FR18 here is a, is a choice engine. I really like it. Um, that uh, FR15 had left a really big impression on me. Uh, and taking a look inside the FR18 here, I can certainly tell why. Um, they uh, do some nice work inside of these engines. Uh, looks very good. All right. I'm not going to put uh, all the Traxxas running gear back on this. Uh, I'm putting this Traxxas pull start on it because I believe it was made for it. Or either that or it fits it perfectly. Uh, and it needs to have a pull start uh, on it. Some kind of starting mechanism. It's not a bump start engine. Uh, and we'll throw our carburetor on there. And I use a Tamiya four-way to tighten down that little bolt there. Alrighty. That. She's a looker too, ain't she? It's a very, very good looking engine, uh, in my opinion. Black and chrome, uh, shiny polished aluminum uh, black and polished aluminum cannot beat that that is a very good looking engine and it is the phantom fr18 hope you enjoyed uh, see you back uh, very soon with another engine or another vehicle could be uh, who knows but it's going to be something nitro related and super cool i'll see you there